we're back again. Hello. <laughs> this is me and this Chris and then JP is here and Jake is over there. There's Jake. And he, <laughs> Sean's not here. He's at one of the million weddings that he's going to this month. Um, we're going to play FTL, which is a space game that <laughs> I just decided, thought it might be fun to stream it because we were talking about it on the cast this week and because it's in beta so most people don't have access to it unless you backed uh, their Kickstarters uh, or their Kickstarter, their single Kickstarter that was incredibly successful. Uh, and it's a cool game. I don't know if it'll be good for streaming so we're going to find out. Maybe it won't be. And then, sorry. Uh, their, their Kickstarters. Kickstarters uh, or their, their Kickstarter. Their single Kickstarter. That would, are you getting? Is anyone getting crazy uh, reverb? No. Weird, weird thing just came out of my computer. Oh, now yes. Hmm. Shit. Okay. Well, I don't know if anything's right or not. I guess we'll just start. Yeah, it seems like it's okay. So FTL, if you uh, are not familiar with it, is a it's sort of like, it's kind of called a roguelike, but it's, I don't know how accurate that really is. It's <coughs> a game where you're given a ship and three crew members to start. And you navigate through space and have encounters and fight things, and it's incredibly unforgiving. And it's all just about trying to get as far as you can through the series of sectors of space uh, without your crew members dying, your ship blowing up, or anything. And so it's got kind of the tonal elements of a roguelike, but the mechanics are totally different. Um, so it's cool. So I don't think... All right, so this is... We're at the Idle Thumbs office right now, so I don't have access to any of the stuff I've unlocked, because I, I guess they don't... This is the beta, so I guess they're not supporting Steam Cloud. I don't know if they will um, later. Um, actually, someone in chat is asking, what is a roguelike? I don't know, JP, you seem like the best person to answer that. Do you want to do that? <laughs> oh, my. Um, so, uh, a, a, rogue, a roguelike means that it's like Rogue, <laughs> which is to say a very old style of game that came about on mainframes in like the 70s and 80s and stuff. Um, the most well-known ones are probably like Rogue and NetHack and Moria and Ombon, possibly. They are... Uh, a lot of them are still still use ASCII graphics, a la Dwarf Fortress, um, and they're turn-based dungeon crawl type things in which you descend through progressively harder levels of a procedural dungeon, um, and so yeah, and you you know are doing like monster killing and picking up loot and you know eating food and casting spells and finding weird items that you haven't that you need to identify before you know how they work or what they do, um, and so that that's kind of the mechanics uh, and just as much a part, like there's this whole aesthetic of difficulty that most roguelikes seem to, seem to subscribe to, which is that they're very difficult and unforgiving, and the idea is that you die a lot and restart, and you know, you restart a playthrough and you just know more. You're just a better player of the game this time around. And so, like, yeah, it's, it's come to me, like, roguelike has come to mean, roguelike still means it's in that, it's very much in that tradition of games, but um, I would say what FTL is and what a whole bunch of a whole like kind of a new wave of indie games for the last few years have been is roguelike like, <laughs> which is a real term uh, that uh, people refer to things as. Like Spelunky is kind of a roguelike like, um, in that it's you know it's procedurally generated and difficult and you're meant to fail a bunch and it's all about the systemic use of these tools and stuff. And so, it, has, it has permadeath. Or, yeah. yeah. Yes, and it has permadeath. I th that's another thing that yeah is pretty core to that. Yeah. Uh, so. Yep. Yeah, and Diablo is kind of a weird offshoot of roguelikes that went in its own direction and stuff. Right. Um, so, uh, we might have to... Yeah. It looks like the whole screen is not quite on here, so you guys can't see... You can also just go to full screen. That's true. I'll go to full screen when we start the thing. Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone has any demands for what we name our crew members here. Oh, in we should this at least run. see what Steve Gaynor's oh, list yeah. of demands is. <laughs> Steve Gaynor apparently wrote in with his own suggestions for crew member names, so I don't know if they are, so... <laughs> Jake has those, I think. You can uh, you can change the little uh, their little top down view, although you don't have very many. You only have two options of lords. right now. I think you you. Oh, I don't know. Steve was actually that was an unrelated email. Oh, 
<laughs> so Steve didn't write it. So you should use the contents of that unrelated email to name the crew members, I think is, is what you should oh, do. Oh, Steve was talking about how his character in FTL may be named Scoops from oh. back in the Kickstarter. Oh, that was just... <laughs> uh, well, we definitely need to try out the Nick Brecken thing just to see if... Oh, right. So we might, was, we might crash was, the game right now. So apparently, is it just... Nick Brecken, Nick Brecken with no spaces, like, capital N, capital B. All right, Nick Brecken claims <laughs> that naming a character Nick Brecken will crash the game. I, uh, seems fine. It works. Nick they Brecken. F- they fixed it. Slash. He was Nick, uh, Nick, Nick Breck. Nick Breck. All right. So Nick Breck. <laughs> who else do we want here? Is it just going to be the absent thumbs? Is that we're going to have? Yeah. Is that's, that what we're doing yeah, now? Yeah, so scoops. So yeah, scoops and yeah. scoops and famous. Yeah. Love you, Steve. Nick Breck, scoops and famous. <laughs> it should probably be F Nick. Nick Breck's fine. The famous Nick Breck. Moving at a Nick Breck speed. All right. Oh, God. Faster than light. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got Nick Breck, Scoops, and Famous. These are our crew members. I forget what order it puts them, so we'll find out once we start the game what roles they each have. Um, oh, there's an easy mode. I've never played on easy. Maybe for the stream, maybe I should do easy to increase the likelihood that mm. we won't just eat shit. I d- I've never actually done that before. Okay, let's play baby mode. All right, we're going to play easy now. If it turns out to be not interesting enough, then we'll... If it we'll turns out that it makes it look like we're really good at this, we'll change <laughs> yeah. we'll the difficulty. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's funny. I've never actually tried this. It's probably pretty much the same. Okay, so uh, when you start the game, you are, you've are you got your three members here, and the first thing you're always going to want to do is make sure that you've got each of your crew members assigned to a, to a room. So... Actually, I'm going to switch to full screen now so you can actually see some of this stuff. So, uh, Famous, it looks like he... Oh, is this game not working? Can I not? Huh? Can I back into it? Uh, no, it's not letting... It's not accepting input from my mouse. That's weird. Hmm. Clicks. Well, this is not good. <laughs> That's why it's in beta. Uh... And or oh, easy mode. Stream setup is in beta. The it's paused. Oh fuck! It's paused. Jesus! <laughs> I'm a smart person. Yeah. Holy Although, uh, crap. Uh, maybe what they should do there is they should they should they should dim they should dim the screen behind the pause <laughs> yeah, notification probably. a little bit. Jesus. Um, okay. All right. So. Dark quad there. So the way this is the God. The way this is this is this worked out is that. It's easy mode. It's fine. It's <laughs> <laughs> I, pl- I swear to God, I've played this game before. Okay, <laughs> so before. yeah, so famous is our is our engineer. He's in our engine room here. Uh, Scoops is our gunner, and uh, Nick Breck is our captain. So Nick Breck and that's the, true. <laughs> Nick Breck in the bridge. Yeah, as <laughs> as in life. Uh, so good. Um, also, the, when the game starts. You you have you each of your your systems, be they weapons or engines or oxygen or shields, uh, takes a certain amount of energy, which is lifted in the listed in the lower left of your screen. You actually start with more systems than you have energy to power. So the first thing you need to do is make a call on what you want to power. And I find that the burst laser is much more valuable than the than the missiles. So I'm going to power my burst laser and my engines fully because engines allow you to evade shots more easily so oh, the beacon man. yep I find that on the first stage is usually pretty easy so I try to go out of my way to hit as many nodes as I can without worrying about getting to the exit really quickly you've got limited fuel so you want you do need to be careful about not dawdling too long and also you start getting chased from the left side of the screen by rebels um, after a certain point so you do there is an element of urgency, but at the beginning of the game it's not, it's not too difficult. So I'm just going to start kind of, oh, well. It's paused. <laughs> it's always paused when you start an encounter and then it unpauses after you, after you continue through. So this is fun. The very first thing I encountered is a sun, which sucks because it randomly cause, not, it periodically causes solar flares that, that fuck your shit up, so you'll see that in a second. Um, this really seems to be doing a number on my mouse control still, even though it's not paused anymore. Great, and immediately my oxygen is taken out, and my ship is already on flame. This is a really convenient thing to happen first. So as you can see, the first That's thing I did was was target the enemy's uh, weapons system. So I uh, immediately disabled his weapons. So at least now I'm only battling this star and not this guy. So he's dead, but now I stole my goddamn ships on fire. 
So <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is already oh I'm already God, just yeah. totally fucked. This, this is, is hilarious. Okay, so my ship has no oxygen and there's flames, which is a really bad combination. Um, oh, all right, this, wow. this, this, this is done. This is an ill-fated mission. This is we're, we're just <laughs> easy mode. It's no, <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> so good. Oh my god, yeah. So this is just yeah, this is just a catastrophe. Um, I don't. Even if I can, I'm down to one crew member. It's not a Nick Brecken valiantly trying to put Everybody's out these dead. flames. Yep. This is this is over. Nick Nick Breck's dead any second now. There, yep. It's over. Jeez. Score 60. This might be the lowest scores I've ever I've ever gotten. Yeah. Let me turn the music down a bit. So I'm gonna restart. So when you restart, it just puts you right back in the first screen with your same crew members and everything. Um, and uh, okay, let's try this again. Famous back to the engine room. Scoops back to the gunners. So this is a new this is a new game session. You'll get different encounters this time around. And stuff. Yeah, everything's randomly everything's randomly generated. Uh, you know, within constraints. So, all right, that was something. <laughs> let's try that again. It's just so you know, the game is serious. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is just the game's way of just letting you know. <laughs> All right, here we go. So once again, I'm first going to target uh, the enemy's weapons room. Hmm. This seems a, a much more of a manageable encounter. Actually, I really lucked out. So the enemy ship and his little drone that's zooming around me both just have beam-type weapons which uh, cannot bust through my shields. So I'm actually basically totally safe. So now what I'm going to focus on is knocking out his engines so that he can't jump away before uh, before I have a chance to destroy him and take his stuff. Um, someone's recommending I use my missiles, but that's totally unnecessary here because he's not a threat at all to me. So missiles would just... You, missiles are limited resources, resource, whereas yeah. lasers are not. So I tend to avoid using my missiles unless I have to. Kind of like the old laser weapons versus ammunition-based weapons in, in the original XCOM. Right. Ah, oh, goddammit. And he jumped away in time anyway. Well, that's fine. I didn't take any damage. I didn't lose anything, so it's a wash. Um, so that was fun. Oh, here's another side. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, so some, you someone... Leave? You, okay, so that's a good question. So JP asks, can you leave? Someone else is saying, could you have jumped away from the sun to help save the ship? So the thing is, you can't jump until your FTL drive is fully charged, and you can see that meter at the top of the screen. Um, oh, yeah. And to, in order for your, for your uh, FTL to charge, your engines need to be uh, operational, and you need a pilot in the bridge. You need a captain in the bridge. And then if, if, you don't, if those things aren't both true, then your FTL drive will not charge. So past a certain point, you just, you can just get screwed. Um, yeah. So this is another, this is another horrible uh, solar encounter here. Let's see how this goes. This is a new enemy type that they just introduced the other day, I think. So they have this, they have, the, you can see here this uh, little meter. This is actually a, a shield that um, has a certain amount of total charge as opposed to most ship's shields, which um, just have a system that powers them, and if you knock out the system, the shield's gone. But this you need to bust through. God damn it, this is... <laughs> Problems. I don't know if this is easy mode, really, but that's fine. <laughs> so, time Well, your FTL drive, this is... Well, yeah. So, see, now they just second. knocked out my... Uh, oh, and you lost They power. knocked out my, my bridge as well, and also my uh, weapons are gone, so... Um, <laughs> people are saying vent the ship, which, yeah, true, I vent the ship. That's what I should be doing right now. Um, so if you open up your uh, your bulkheads, you will let, you will, you know, ox ob oxygen will decrease in the ship, and fires will go out more quickly. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. Wait, Although... Who's dead? No one's dead right oh, now. Oh, you're all hiding. Although honestly, this early in the game, I I feel like there's kind of no point in continuing if you're at this point. Like I'm only two screens in, so yeah. it's not there's not necessarily much reason to actually keep playing. So just in the well, I guess we're fine. I don't know. Let's see what you can do with such a daring. So I'm gonna jump to the store just to give myself uh, 
The nice thing about going to a store node is that there's never any enemies there, so it just kind of gives you some time. Everyone's to, friends at the store node. <laughs> <laughs> to fix things. So, uh, you see my guys here repairing the um, medical bay or whatever it is. So they can then be healed. So then, yeah, now they're, now they're getting healed, anymore. and uh, <laughs> so there's no more fires in my ship, but the oxygen is quite low, you can tell because the rooms are tinted. And I need to repair my my weapons. Man, this is some of the worst luck I've started with in a while. <laughs> Someone's good, asking uh, if this is how hard it always is. <laughs> no, this is not easy mode. And yeah, this is not easy mode. I'll do have to say though that this is a case where I don't think easy or normal affects actually the random roll of of what you encounter. I think yeah. it just affects yeah. how um, it's how hardy the enemies are and things like that. It I mean, can't be likely for you to be jumping to stars this many times in the early game like this, right? Or is it? I mean, yeah, I mean, th this is I. I've played a lot of this game, and usually I get much, much farther than this without uh, encountering such a bad situation. So I mean, it's just luck of the draw. This is how, I mean, this is just part of how games like this works. Is work is that sometimes you're yeah. just going to get a yeah. crazy. Well, you if know. you weight stuff differently, you know, like, uh, you know, oh. maybe they could say you're less likely to jump to a star yeah. in your first, you know, five encounters. Or According something. to chat, easy mode, you gain more scrap, and the enemies have less health. And that's okay, like, that's so a yeah, big mechanic. that's so weaker power. enemies, yeah, more yeah, more scrap, yeah. scrap is money basically, yeah. So that that makes sense. That's what I would expect in easy mode. So it doesn't affect the I random rolls. Your, your jump destinations and stuff. Yeah. yeah. The other thing you can do to store is repair your ship, which I'm going to do right now. I'm not going to repair it fully because I I still kind of feel like I'm early enough in the game that I shouldn't be uh, destroying. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone suggests dropping medbay power until you need it. Yeah, that's something I often do. I usually don't bother this early in the game because it's actually rare that I need my missiles this early, so I just don't bother. But yeah, I, I might as well. So that's a good suggestion. Um, that allow me that allow me to power my missiles because I'm not powering my medbay. So I haven't played this before. What 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 happens later in the game that makes you capable of withstanding that that encounter at, right. in front of the so star? So over the over the course of the game, as you destroy enemies and you know come across lucky. Encounters, you'll get more, um, you'll get more scrap, which is money. You'll find things to upgrade your ship with. You'll buy upgrades for your ship, new weapons. You'll, uh, I'll show you the the upgrade system. Uh, so, especially early in the game, early in the game, it's always it's almost always better to engage in an encounter when it's offered. So there's a rebel ship nearby, and I'm going to demand the surrender of their goods because why not? Yeah, this see, this guy has a missile launcher and he's got the oh, okay so he's got the type of dude who fires a little laser which is actually more dangerous because that knocks out my shield every time he fires it um, I'm getting pretty lucky actually right now so this is so far so good as you can see I've knocked out his weapons uh, the, his weapon systems on the opposing ship are red so uh, and now his uh, engines are red so that means he can't warp away so next I'm gonna try and take out his his little helper Towering yeah, so see now I knocked out his drone control, so his drone is not moving. He's got his weapons back, so I'm going to target his weapons again. Which hopefully I do before his missiles spool up. <coughs> yep, and there it goes, so he's gone. So then you get stuff for that happening. Mm -hmm. So I got 16 scrap and a laser, which is nice. The little text boxes make me, make me want to play Flotilla. Yeah, the, this is, if you haven't played Flotilla, which is by Brendan Chung, the guy who made 30 Flights of Loving, you should play it. It's really cool. It's a similar structure to this, but a totally different combat paradigm. Yeah, it's like three D space combat and kind of a brain twisting space spatial tactics sort of thing. So very different from this, but yeah, the personality that comes through in the little interstitial activities. Right. Yeah, is for sure. Really awesome. So someone says, "How do you feel about games with these types of sporadic difficulty curves versus games with smoother ones?" I don't know if you guys, either of you guys, have any opinions about that. Well, I I don't. I don't really believe in the idea of a game with a perfectly smooth difficulty curve because yeah, that, that, that might be like a game with that sounds like, and this might be just a straw man, but like a game with no challenge. You know, every game, in order for a game to have any sense of texture or pacing, it's going to have a little bit of a few bumps in its in its difficulty curve and just in like what you could what you, what you as a player can deal with. Yeah. Um, that said, you know, there's ways that you can, you know, there's 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 ways you can you can. Change the design, like as, as I mentioned before, like the original XCOM is a really good example of something that it's challenging, and you will definitely get creamed. Um, and there's a lot of advanced knowledge that you have to have in, in that game, which I think is a weakness of it when you're going back to it today. But they did a whole bunch of stuff to make sure that the beginning of the game was at least something where you could get a foothold 
you know, and so, you know, that's like, it's challenging, so it does, it's difficulty curve does have, like, have some, some real bumps when you're on your way up, but I think it's a fantastic example of game design. Yeah, and, I totally and this, this game is kind of doing some of the same stuff, and maybe some of this stuff, you know, it's still in development, and or maybe some of the stuff that it's throwing at you is a little too early to handle, but that's, that's one of the things that's interesting about roguelikes, uh, is that, you know, like, just part of their, part of their, their, part of that style of game is just that it's okay if the difficulty curve has some unreasonable, has some has some, has some things that 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 kill players in it. You know, yeah. It's just that kind of attrition is okay because there there's an emphasis on, on multiple game sessions. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, real quick, I'm just going to point out the the upgrade system here. So, um, oh, and one thing you want to do after a battle, just make sure all your guys are all healed up. So. Look over on the left side and look at your guy's health, and uh, if any of them are below full, stick them over in the med bay and let them heal up. Um, also, you can see over here, the reason you want to pick a, a system for each of your guys and keep them there is because they will level up that thing uh, as they use it. So Nick Breck, you can see here, piloting, he is about, you know, about two-fifths of the way through leveling up his piloting skill. Uh, Scoops is... A little bit on about a fifth on weapons and famous about a third on his uh, his engine maintenance or whatever. So uh, yes, uh, the reason it says the video game someone's asking is because that's what I named my ship. Um, and <coughs> usually one of the first things I upgrade once I get some scrap. This is your this is your upgrade screen for your ship. Is where you upgrade systems and buy more energy to power those systems. So you I usually start just grabbing engines, which is a cheap early upgrade that gives you. 5% additional dodge to chance to dodge. So I'm going to upgrade my engines and then I'm going to buy a power bar to power those engines and then I'm going to actually power them in the lower left here. So now you can see my evade percentage has gone from 20 to 25%. So it just now I have a, you know, one fourth chance to dodge a given hit if it, if it, if it comes at me. So that's that. So the last couple um, battles I won, and I haven't really been talking about them that much, but uh, they're early, most of the time, as 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 right now, early in the game, the battles are not all that uh, horrible. So you can see on the left, there's this there's this encroaching arc. This represents uh, this represents um, rebel the rebel fleet that is following that is tracking you, that is following you and trying to get to the headquarters at the which is the very end of the game so you're trying to stay ahead of this so you can get to the end and warn the federation or whatever whatever the hell the fictional thing is so i'm gonna take, i'm gonna i'm gonna i think if i look at this node down here i think this is close enough to the exit that i can jump there have an encounter then still get to the exit before the rebels catch up with me so i the reason i'm gonna do that is just to give myself an extra chance to get some more stuff before i'm out of the out of the first sector so these guys want me to pay money, and I'm gonna refuse that. So I'll fight them. So they've got a, a missile thing. So I'm gonna depower my med bay and power my missiles just to, just in case I need it. All right. So they hit my little door system first, which is not so bad. But just in case, I'm gonna fire off a missile. Okay, good. So I knocked out their weapons. Now I'm gonna try to knock out their engines to keep them from jumping away, which I did. So good. And usually what I do when, I, when I'm kind of in an optimal situation is I wait until my weapons are just ready to fire before I choose a target, <coughs> just in case they repair it at the last second. So this is another thing that often happens, is they will offer you, uh, they, will, they will try to, to concede some number of resources if you stop attacking them. I usually refuse unless I'm in a really bad situation because, you know, whatever. Um, why not? choose death. So we will not accept surrender. I say someone says it's best to missile the shield generator. That that can be the case. I usually don't. I usually don't bother uh, this early in the game to take out their shields if they only have one shield. If they only have one actual shield. So the reason I I just go straight to the systems I want to knock out is because I'm attacking with my burst laser, which has three shots. And early in the game, it's usually pretty easy to bust through their shields and attack a system immediately without actually taking out the shields first. Later in the game, when enemies start having like two or three or four uh, shield segments, 
then you definitely want to knock out their shields before you start attacking, otherwise you're, you're never going to bust through it. So that's a matter of taste, I suppose. Um, here uh, you can see my door system got knocked out. It's red, so I'm going to send two guys to repair it. What, is, what does it mean, that system getting knocked so out? Like the, the, doors the door system... Open. The doors open... So when your door system is knocked out, it means that guys still open doors to walk through them, but you can't arbitrarily oh, open yeah. and close bulkheads right. just with mouse clicks. To, to which vent is, the ship. And to vent the ship stuff, and yeah. yeah, do other stuff. Yeah, So that's really useful. Yeah. Um, when a certain room of your ship is on fire, it's nice usually to vent... If it's just one room, it's really helpful to just vent yeah. like a path yeah. from... Oops, well, now I just... <laughs> in showing that, I just made this room devoid of oxygen here, so it's going to take some time before it gets back to normal, but <laughs> anyway, whatever. Uh, so, I'm going to jump to the exit now, and uh, so this is a ship that offered me a bribe right out of the gate. I'm looking at them, and they have a missile right here, a laser, and one... And one sick paint job. <laughs> and a sick paint job, and only one shield block, so I'm going to go ahead and, and mm. just fight them. I'm going to attack... Uh, I tend to play it. I, I tend to play these early battles relatively uh, in a somewhat risky way. Where okay, so there I like, lost my weapons. I still they knocked out one of my weapon energy slots, but that's still enough to power my burst laser, which is generally what I actually use. So they're doing some damage, but I should be okay. All right, so I did knock out their weapons. They've done some damage, but their weapons are gone now, so they're much it's, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. You know, the, the AI seems to intentionally not target you in, in quite as thoughtful or tactical a way. Yeah, although later, as the game goes on, they seem to get a lot more about it, yeah. know, ruthless about that. Um, someone says, have you beaten the boss yet? I've No, I haven't, unfortunately. I've beaten the first phase of the boss, so this is one of those irritating boss battles where you beat the boss, or it seems like you beat the boss, and then the boss warps away and then becomes stronger for reasons that are unknown to me. Um, so I've beaten the first phase of the boss, and uh, I haven't gotten further than that. Alright, so this guy's dead. Someone's asking why the blinking red dot. So that's because this room... Uh, oh, I've, I've never seen this before. Um, destroy the ship and salvage it, or use the leverage you gain by saving their life to convince them to, de to delay the pursuing fleet. I don't really care about delaying the pursuing fleet, so I'm just going to salvage the ship. Alright, so the reason this, is, this red light is blinking is because this room has been breached, and I need to go fix it. <coughs> it's letting oxygen into the or it's letting uh, oxygen it's letting out space of the ship. Into the ship. Yeah, it's letting space into the vacuum. ship. Let the vacuum in. So that's repaired. Now these guys are they were it, asphyxiating for a while, so I'm gonna repair this med bay and leave them in there to repair a bit. <laughs> I'm power my med bay for that to work. Someone asked if you can still get into the beta now that Kickstarter is over. I don't think you can, unfortunately. Yeah, I was asking about that because I snoozed and lost. Yeah. It's so funny, I keep forgetting which of these guys is which system, because I'm, I usually, when I play, I've got three crew members who are always the same, um, and so I know really well what my traditional crew members, where they belong in the ship, but I keep forgetting where Scoops and Famous each belong, so I have to keep checking there. Uh, okay, so, Scoops weapons, famous is I'm now going to, once you get above about 100 scrap, I find that you can... Depending on, on what shape, shape you're in, that's enough to upgrade your shields. Uh, I say depending on what shape you're in because you might want to save money to repair your actual ship. Um, I'm, not, I'm still not too concerned, so I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my shields. That's really expensive because you need to pump two points into shields, and then you need to power those two slots with two more power bars. So it's, it's a lot of money. Um, and then don't forget to actually power the system once you upgrade it. So now I have two shield slots instead of one, which is pretty... Uh, good. It's just a big help. Uh, this is the first point where I, I'm choosing where to, to go. So you can see that there are three different general categories of sector. There's civilian sectors, which are green, hospital sectors, which are red, and nebulas, which are blue. And nebulas are more likely to contain uh, areas that interfere with your systems and, and disable parts of your ship. Um, I'm going to go that way just because well, maybe I'll go to the I'll, I'll go to the pirate sector. We're still pretty early, and I'm not too concerned about it. And, and nebulas are a pain in the ass. And you can see that after the, no matter which way I go, after that there's a I can I have a big long string of civilian sectors, which can be really good if you need some help. So first, I'm going to go to my pirate. The pirate sector. Okay. Uh, 
and let's look at the map. So there's a distress call. Distress calls are, they can be any number of things. They can be traps that someone's put down a distress beacon, but it's just an enemy. They can be quests you get where someone will, you'll find someone and they'll say, oh, please deliver this from here to there. Then you'll get a new marker that updates on your thing. Anyway, we'll just go there and see what it is. It's a trap, so that's whatever. It's fine. <coughs> Hopefully I'll find a store soon. One of the, the main benefits of stores is that you can uh, repair your uh, hull, which is damaged. But I don't think this guy's going to be too big a deal. Um, the nice thing about having these two shields is that if you take out their missiles and they just have lasers left, they're unli unlikely to be able to do anything against you because lasers are blocked by shields. So he's, it just gave me a little pop-up that said he's trying to escape, so my next, so I'm gonna try to attack his uh, his engines now to keep that from happening. Oop, I missed his engines with all three shots, so he might actually jump away before I can kill him. Yep, and he did. Oh well. I could be using my missiles to knock out his shields and make it a little easier to, uh, to knock out his systems. I generally don't do that because Shields are kind of a precious resource and they're expensive, or I'm sorry, missiles are an expensive resource and they're they're expensive to buy, so I generally don't like to waste them on just guys like that that are not that big of a threat to me. Oh, someone's asking what the exit on the map is. The exit is where you get to go to the next sector. So every sector has an exit and when you get there, you're given that higher level map that shows you the different sectors you can go to. Uh, there's a civilian ship that is under fire. These are great because once you take out the enemy, you get this. You get the loot from the enemy, but then the civilian ship also, also, often also gives you some kind of reward for saving them. So here's another one of these new guys that was added in in a recent patch. The weird thing about these guys is that they're called the Zoltan or something, Sweet. and they're listed. They're they're shown as friendly on the the higher level map, but they're. I never, I very rarely encounter friendly ones, so I'm not sure what, what that means exactly. They're this wacky shield race, and they seem, uh... A shield race. A wacky shield yeah, race. They seem like they're kind of the enigmatic, spacey ones, is what they're supposed to be. There's other, other enemies that are, that are kind of insectoid, and there's some that are big oafish dudes, and those are different kinds. So there I've knocked out his weapons, so I'm going to go for his... Go for his uh, engines next. Also, no mess with this. So this guy's not doing. This guy's not really been much of a much of a problem. Do -do -do -do. There he's gone. All right. So yeah. So you can see I got the scrap from destroying the civilian ship, and then I. Or, I'm sorry, from destroying the threat <laughs> to the civilian ship, and then you contact the civilian ship, and he gave me more stuff. So that's totally great. So good for me. And uh, I am going to. Um, I've got 74 scrap. I'm going to go in and upgrade my engines. I really like upgrading my engines because uh, it just gives you another chance to avoid damage entirely. So you can see my evade chance is up to 30 percent now. And this, this can start getting really high once your crew members actually upgrade their abilities. Um, so you can see Nick Brecken is more than halfway to getting his uh, piloting skills upgraded, and Famous is a little about, about halfway to getting his engine skills upgraded. Someone's pointing out it's weird to see this play style, they just dump missiles all day. Yeah, that's a, just totally another style. Um, I used to shoot missiles all the time, and I just found it really expensive, and usually the enemies early in the game are not threatening enough for me to make it worthwhile, although maybe that just means I end up spending more money repairing my hull, so who knows. It's probably largely a wash, but if I can get into a point where I can find two level 2 burst lasers, I just drop my missiles entirely, because at that point you fire six uh, shots every time your weapons spool up, and I find that's just more valuable than having, shield, or having missiles. Alright, so here's ship another pretty normal one. <clears throat> this guy only has lasers, you can see. These are lasers. Um, so he has no missiles, so uh, that's... Yeah, well, he made it through, that's fine. Someone's suggesting to blow his O2 out. That's a that's a, an interesting hmm. strategy. Um, 
I feel like that's longer term than I'm usually comfortable with, but it mm -hmm. seems it seems valid. Sense for a bigger ship with more sections. Yeah, I find depriving them of that uh, right. Practical flexibility. Ultimately, with the with these kinds of encounters, I generally just don't even really worry too much at all about what I'm doing because his weapons are such that he's kind of unlikely to do do tons of damage to me <coughs> under any circumstance. So I'm just I don't generally get too wacky about it. Um, do not accept surrender. I forget. There, I think there. I think you can actually kind of uh, get to identify what kind of enemy, what kind of what races and what ship types are more likely to uh, to warp away. Um, hmm. And I just I. I always forget, so... Is that like part I of often the attack personality of, of those aliens? Yeah, I think it's okay. supposed to be, yeah. yeah. Um, so I generally take out their engines anyway, just to be safe. Can you accept surrender and then shoot them? You can, yeah, you can not, unfortunately, double-cross someone by accepting surrender and then by taking them out. There's no way to do that. Once you once the battle's over, there's no... Uh, <coughs> weapons are no longer active. Someone says there's an achievement for killing them with, with oxygen. That's pretty cool. I didn't actually know that, so... Mm. Sorry for not, uh, not not doing that. I'll do that in another in a future encounter. Just to get that Chivo? For that for that Chivo, yeah. That Chivo. Seems like within combat, like, pretty much every choice you make is consequential, meaningful, you know... Yeah. Lots of trade-offs and stuff. Like, uh -huh. even just the, the difference between, like, yeah, choosing to fight with missiles a lot versus, versus lasers. Yeah, for sure. Um, it also... Yeah, it definitely has a big impact, especially because it... It affects what you buy, what you sell. Um, so you can you can sell uh, weapons you're not using and other systems you're not other kind of upgrades you're not using. So that has a big impact then on how much money you have, which in turn uh, has an impact on what yeah. you can afford to, to, to buy. So yeah, yeah. Th this game has a lot of uh, ripple effect from, from its various systems, which I like a lot. Yeah, a lot of board gamey touches. Someone points out that accepting surrender then shooting them would essentially be the same as just continuing to fight because then they would just shoot back, which is true. Ruthless. So this seems to be going fine. So after those first, after those first couple brutal uh, <laughs> solar encounters, it seems to be this seems to be rel going relatively yeah, smoothly yeah, right now. Yeah, I've had a sun since then. Yeah, that's weird. That almost makes, that almost makes me think that they biased it towards. <laughs> So if someone points out, this is true, uh, ships usually give missiles and scrap for accepting surrender, whereas killing them gives more scrap and fuel. So that's one of the reasons, like, that's totally true, and that ties into my playstyle, which is not missile-focused. So I, I generally hang on to the mission, the missiles I start with and, uh, and just save them for when I really need them. Um, so yeah. Do, do, do. Um, so I'm at the point right now where my last, uh, my last, um, once I buy one more dodge, then I start getting to diminishing returns. So up until the next dodge upgrade, every dodge upgrade you buy, every engine upgrade you buy gives you 5% more dodge. Past that point, it's only, it's only 3% each, each until the end. So I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm going to wait and see. I kind of want to upgrade my ship, so I'm going to save my money just for this second. Um, someone asked if I'm going to sell this hull laser or upgrade to it. I'm planning on... Well, I might upgrade to it. I really like using lasers. So I might just sell my Artemis missile and then use some of that money to upgrade my... Uh... Actually, you know what? I'm really stupid. I should be not even using my burst laser. I should be using my... I should buy another uh, energy and use this hull laser. Because it's strictly better than my my burst laser. It just costs one more energy. The only risky thing about this is that if I really need a missile, then I have to deactivate my whole laser, activate my missile, and then it has to start charging again. But generally speaking, I, I much prefer lasers, so I'm doing that for now. Someone points out that there's longer charge time, and it, so it is worse. That that might be true. I have, I don't have a lot of experience with this mm. missile, so or I mean with this weapon. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. It might, I, might, I might have made a bad call right now. Uh, 
I did not manage to take out his missile, which is not what I like. Let me go put out that fire. He is firing a lot of missiles at me right now. Fortunately, they're not hitting essential systems, but... Oh, someone points out this laser is better if you target hull. They're right. I don't use this weapon often, so I forgot about that. But it does more damage if you tire if you target a non-systems room. Um, so once once you have their weapons knocked out, yeah, that's a good that's a good thing to do. What I probably should have done is used my regular burst laser until I took out his his weapon, and then switched to the hull laser and attacked a non-system room. There's some loud stuff going on in here. Let's close the door. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. So here I got all my stuff, and I need to go patch up this hull breach and repair my doors. Someone suggests upgrading the doors. That's actually something I've never done before. It always seems mm -hmm. like it always seems uh, a little superfluous, but I'm. What, do you, what does that do? What do you get for? Um, I forget. <laughs> Let's look. So upgrading your doors gives you blast doors. Oh, okay. So. You upgrade to blast doors, oh, and it okay. means that that uh, that fires and intruders have a tougher time passing through, presumably because they have to blow them up to get through. Mm -hmm. That does seem valuable. I I always forget about <coughs> stuff like that because it's a, when I'm making the call between that or upgrading my shields or my engines or something, I always end up upgrading my the thing that seems more obvious. What's but that a, that could be a case where I'm just being simple. What, what what can cause your ship to get boarded? So enemies. So there's a That's system. Awesome. There's a system called. Uh, actually, I forget what it's called. But there's a there's a crew teleport system is what it's called. And you, uh, it means you can put uh, crew members in that room, and then from there they can warp into uh, the opposing ship. And so similarly, mm -hmm. enemies can do that against you. Um, the danger is that it means you have fewer crew members on your ship to put out fires, to man your systems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and same with enemies when they, you know, so one thing that can be nice when they board you is if you uh, take out one of, like, their guns or something, they have, it's harder for them to repair. Um, some races are really, really good boarders. Like, the, mm. the bug enemies are really strong in combat, so when they board you, it's much tougher than if, a diff than if another race does. Mm. Is accidentally open, opening doors a common way for new players to die? Yeah, so there's a really, what I think is a really frustrating choice in this game, which is that uh, there is there are these two bu shortcut buttons here, which are close all doors on the ship and open all doors in the ship. And open all doors, open all the doors, including the doors to the exterior, <laughs> I wish there. I wish you want there open interior doors. Yeah, I wish yeah. there was another yeah. button that was open all interior <laughs> doors. <laughs> right, which is often the thing <laughs> I want to do. Open all doors is a little insane. Just <laughs> turn inside of spaceship into outside of spaceship. Yeah. Oh, someone. Someone says if your oxygen is system is good enough, you can refill breach rooms, which is that's pretty awesome. Mm, yeah. That's cool. Uh. Oh, oh, someone says it opens interior doors, then press it a oh, second opens, time. Open all doors. Open only opens interior doors now. Let's give it a shot. Oh, they must have patched that. Oh man, they did it! Oh, that's the best. Okay, I never Smart. tried that because, because you were it used to. <laughs> you used it to used to. Yeah. It, it did, in fact, <laughs> used to open the outside doors, and so I yeah. never knew they changed that. So that's great. That's good. That's really good to know. Um, sorry, everyone. I told you an incorrect thing. Yeah. I'm glad they did that. Okay, and then if you click it again, it opens all the doors. All right, that's that's really good to know. So let's go. It always seemed weird to me. Actually, I'm gonna switch back to my burst lasers. Why would you ever open all the doors? The time, the reason to <coughs> open all the doors is, for example, if tons of your ship is on fire, or there's there's uh, there's enemies all over your ship, and you just open all the doors, then quickly close the doors just to the like the medical bay or something where your guys are. So your guys are standing in there healing, um, which essentially makes them almost invulnerable in combat. Um, and what you know, lets the floods the entire rest of the ship, uh, makes it devoid of oxygen. Sorry, I'm not paying attention to now. I'm being bad. Yeah. Uh, so they knocked out one of my shields. But do do. -do. And when 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 much of your ship is is devoid of oxygen, 
Um, I, th I could be making this up, but it feels to me like your ship oxygen uh, redistributes faster when your interior do doors are open. I could be I could be wrong about that, but it seems hmm. like okay. that. I yeah. feel like that's the case. Yeah. It looks like someone said that in chat, too. Okay, someone seems to be confirming that in chat. You guys have to refill the O2 in chat. <laughs> in chat, yeah. <laughs> so Sorry, guys, the oxygen's yeah. getting a little low in there. Uh, vent chat. Chatters are, <laughs> chatters are dropping like flies. So I've gone a while without without running into a store, which is, seems a little unusual, but that, again, that's just kind of a luck of the draw thing, presumably. Venting, uh, venting O2 versus borders is a hilarious strategy as well, I hadn't thought about that. Uh-huh, yep, totally. You can, you can alien them. Yeah. Yep. Alright, so this is a case of a, a distress call that's a quest beginning, so hmm. these guys want me to lead them to a particular destination, mm -hmm. so they're going to add a quest marker to my map. I found this really late, so... Unfortunately, now it's. I don't think I'll be able to make make it to this quest and then back to the exit before uh, the fleet catches up to me. You can see it would be one jump, two jumps, three jumps, four jumps. Oh fuck! Well, whatever. So I'm just going straight to the exit now. Um, Sorry, slug interceptor. So what I might do is just jump away to a to a node and then back again to the exit. That'll allow me to jump out just in time before the uh, before the fleet gets there and it just gives me one more chance to to find extra stuff so someone says I can make it to the store oh I, I, well, right, I can make it to this close store so I'm gonna jump there and then jump back and if you if you're within this like outer lighter tinted fleet region you're fine that's just a warning that 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 that's where the guys are gonna be next time so I'm gonna go to the store come back and I'll have time to make it to the exit before the fleet comes. So, first, well, so I'm not actually sure if I want to sell my art, my missiles or uh, or my burst laser. I feel like I I'm preferring the regular hull laser that I started with, or I'm sorry, the burst laser that I started with. Um, in any case, what I want to do is fix my fleet. Uh, someone points out that Weapon Pre-Igniter is, is awesome, that's true. Um, oh, f I didn't notice that was there. So I'm going to actually, now I have to sell something <laughs> to have enough money to buy that because I just spent a bunch of money on my hull. So, god, how do I want to do this? Well, if you didn't like using the hull laser, then you feel like the missiles are necessary. Yeah. The thing is, the, the thing is, buying a Weapon Pre-Igniter makes your weapons immediately available um, yeah. when you jump to a thing, so that actually decreases the negative part of ha of the longer charge time in the hull laser. So I think I'm just going to actually take a risk here and sell my missiles, which I just rarely use, and over time pump more money into weapon systems to eventually allow me to operate both lasers simultaneously. This is kind of a risk, and I, I wouldn't I don't know if it's necessarily the right call, but what the hell, I'm going to try it. By this weapon free igniter, now I have almost no money, so I'm kind of hoping I'm just kind of banking on the fact that I'll find some money soon, and then, uh, and then, uh, yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to equip my hull laser first, um, because it's, because I'll always have access to it immediately after jumping into <coughs> the thing, then I can switch to my burst laser, which refills faster after that point, so we'll see how this goes. I'm not the kind of player who generally, like, figures out a lot of the min-max stuff, so a lot of the things that I have a tendency towards may be not correct. <laughs> They're just kind of things that I've, I've fallen on due to due to kind of personal preference and habit, and they, they may not be ideal. I just want to know. So I have a choice between the NG homeworlds and the Mantis-controlled sector. The Mantis are my least favorite enemies in this game. They're these bugs who board you and just tear your guys apart. So I always I almost always avoid them at all costs. So I'm going to go to the NG homeworlds. The NG are a relatively friendly uh, engineer race. There's some really creative naming going on in this game. <laughs> and immediately there's a store, which is kind of frustrating because I don't have any, I don't have enough money to make a store visit worthwhile. So it's the only place I can go. So 